our dear viewers and listeners. We greet you all in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yet again, we say this is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be Today, as we begin the Bible study, we ask you to invite somebody to join in. And let's open up this session with the word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Yes, Lord. We thank you for the revelation of your word. Yes, Lord. Open our hearts to receive it by faith. Yes, Lord. That it may work in us. Yes, Lord. And cause us to act it out. Yes, Lord. To the glory of your name. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Today we will take our reading. Right out again, Nakusoma. From the book of Revelation, chapter 22. We shall be reading verse 10, verse 11. And verse 14. Verse 10 goes as follows. And he said to me, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book. For the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be still the field. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And verse 14 to 15 says, Blessed are those who do his commandments. That they may have the right to the tree of life. And may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers. And sexually immoral. And murderers and idolaters. And whoever loves and practices a lie. Having looked at this text, John is coming to the end of his revelation. And the angel that has given him this interpretation of the revelation that is before him is about to depart. So we have the parting words of the angel concerning the revelation that we saw from the first chapter of the book of Revelation. And the angel now has a command for John and says don't seal the prophetic words of this book because the time is near. Now, we need to look at this in context. If we take it back to the Old Testament, in the revelation that was given to Daniel, in his prophetic books, Daniel the angel, the angel came to him and said that he should seal up this, the prophetic words that he had received. We see that in Daniel chapter 8 and verse 26. We see the same in Daniel 12. Verse 4. And we see the same warning in Daniel chapter 12, verse 9. Why? Because this, the time had not yet come. The time was pointing to the future. 
Now that Christ has been revealed, the message to John is that this word cannot be sealed because the time is near. We are living in the time where this message is not sealed. What message are we talking about? The message of the revelation of Jesus Christ. The word of God. The word made flesh. The one whose glory is of the Father. The one from whom we receive grace upon grace. The one who gives life. And the one who saves sinners. This message of grace that has shown upon all men is not concealed. It has now been revealed to me. It is now available to all people. The love of God that moved him to send his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That message is not sealed. It is available to everyone. Now I need to take you back in Revelation chapter 10. Because John there had seven thunders. And the message he got, he got the angel comes to him and tells him to seal up that message. In other words, he was not to reveal what has been said. Now, that doesn't mean that what is revealed here is what happened in Revelation chapter 10. Uh, because the Bible is not explicit on that. I know some commentators have said it is that, but the Bible does not say it. And where the Bible is silent, it is best we keep quiet. Why? Because this is not the first time that somebody has received a revelation all has had utterances and then been told or instructed not to reveal what he has seen and heard. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 4 he says he was caught up in the third heaven and when he went there, he said he had words that are inexpressible, which a man is not allowed to speak. They were so wonderful. But he was not permitted to speak them. But the good news is there is a message that has been permitted to be made known. John tells us that the message of the revelation of who Jesus Christ is as revealed by God is not sealed up. That places a mandate on every one of us that has been graciously saved by the blood of Jesus. That has Christ. believed on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And has had their sins washed away. And their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We have a message to proclaim. 
have a message of reconciliation. Of reconciling men with God. Of reconciling men with men. Of drawing men from the darkness into life. Of snatching people from death to life. You and I are recipients of a message that is open to all mankind. There is no other salvation Jesus is the way, the truth and the life, and no one can come to the Father except through him. We have to take this message without any shame, without any fear. We have to re-echo the words of Paul that I am not ashamed of this gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. Men and women will not get saved unless we get these words that are not sealed and send them to the uttermost parts of the earth. The Bible says how beautiful are the feet of them that bring good news. We need to send this news to all the world. Because this news is the real deal. Now, the Bible in verse 11 offers us a warning. It says, Now, he who is unjust, let him be unjust. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous. He who is holy, let him be holy still. What does this imply? This implies that when we carry this message, it doesn't mean that everywhere we go, we will receive a red cup. Invitation to preach the gospel. And the word will warmly be received. And men and women will be saved. In some senses, yes. But in certain areas, it will not be so. But we should take heart. Because we have the message for the season. The word to heal nations. The word to save souls from eternal damnation. So as we go forward and as we see today, there are many questions that are being asked that if the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Why do we have an increase in profanity? Why should people continue in sin? The fact is, when grace abounds, even the enemy of our souls is at war. So the devil will increase the sin. But grace will also abound. So the light of salvation will continue to shine in the dark. And the warning here is we have no other message. We have no other savior. We have no other redeemer. The time is near. We are closer to our salvation than when we first believe. Any time the Lord may come. And the question is, if he comes, will he find you ready? Because the fact of the matter is this, that when he shows up, it will be too late. Or if he delays, and you breathe your last, 
it will be too late. No ceremony. No function. Will bring redemption. Nothing man will do. Will save you. Now is the day of salvation. And the Bible says if you don't believe the message. If you don't believe the revealed word of God. That places Jesus Christ as the only Savior of the world. Then you have only one unrighteousness. You will continue in your unrighteousness still. This creates a hardening of heart. And this is the message that goes back all the way. The prophet Isaiah prophesied about it. Look at what he has to say. In Isaiah chapter 6. From verse 9 to verse 10. He says. He talks of. He says go. And say to these people, keep listening and do not understand. You keep looking or seeking and do not perceive. That are the minds of these people. Defend their ears. Blind their eyes. Otherwise, uh, yeah. they may see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their minds, and turn back and be healed. Now listen to this. What is he trying to say here? This is what Ezekiel says. He says, I will open your mouth. God is promising. And he says, and you will say to them, this is what the Lord God says. Let the one who listens, listen. Let the one who refuses, refuse. For they are rebellious people. We are living in a season and a time of increased hard-heartedness. Jesus re-echoed the same message. Matthew chapter 13, 30. Where he goes on to quote Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. And what does he want us to to pick us the message. He says, at the end of the day, otherwise, you may see with your eyes, hear with your ears, understand with your mind or heart, and turn and be healed. That is the message for you. That is what we need to do right now. We need to see with our eyes, see the love of God for what it is. See God the way God perceives sin. See yourself for who you are if it were not for Christ. Listen to this message of grace. And after you have listened, understand with your heart. And then turn. Turn is the word repent. And he says, after you have turned, then healing will come your way. And the word healing is the word that we use to mean you will, your sins will be forgiven. And you will be restored. That is a wonderful promise from our God and Savior. If we do not do that, this is what Paul talks about. In his message to the church in Rome. 
In Romans chapter 1, he has a detailed description of what happens when men and women of all walks of life reject this message of grace. Look at what he says. He says, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible attributes are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. Even his external power. And Godhead. So that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God. They did not glorify him as God. You see all over the world. There are a lot of people that believe that God is. Exists. Yes there are those who. Don't believe he exists. But they cannot explain how creation came into being. So they attribute it to some power. They attribute it to some force. And they cannot quite put a point to how all that we see today Exists. And the Bible goes on to say, Nor are they thankful. Now, this is concerning those that believe that there exists a power of God. But it says they have become futile in their thoughts. And their foolish hearts are dark. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made incorruptible of incorruptible man. Birds and four footed animals and creeping things. I remember going into a certain show. And behind the show, what a show. And on these shelves were all kinds of creatures. Growing creatures. Creatures that you could not imagine. And I asked this gentleman, what is that? And he said, those are gods. And as I was preaching the message of Christ, for once I got shocked when he said, I want to receive that Christ. And I said, okay. And then he turned to the shell to make room for this God that I was introducing. And that's when it dawned on me. I said, no, no, no. This one that I'm telling you does not sit in shell. He dwells in the hearts and lives of men. So where are we headed to? The Bible says, therefore God also gave them up. In other words, once the revelation of the grace of God has come, the salvation that is by grace, if it has come our way, and we reject this message. The Bible tells us that God would give them up to uncleanness. To the lusts in their hearts. To dishonor their bodies amongst themselves. To defy themselves. Who exchange the truth of God for a lie. And worshipped and served the creature. 
Rather than the Creator. Who is blessed forever. Think about that. How many times in this time that we live in are we driven, are we swayed to worship the creation? People go to mountains. People, I, I, I never forget this time I was praying for someone. And the Spirit of the Lord revealed to me. Uh, and right in their waist, they had several things. And I said, the Lord wants to let go of that. And he said, if I let go, I will die. I said, no, you will not die. Because you have the life of God in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is out in the world. And this person let Go of what was in their ways. It was a filthy stuff. And I said, Do you believe your life is hell here? Imagine that. You believe that your life is in these trinkets around your waist. That is the life from hell. That is the life from the devil. Life, life proceeds from God. And this life is found in Jesus Christ. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. So when we are dead in our sins, life can only be found in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to his name. And the Bible tells us, Bible Paul goes on to explain, it goes all the way up to verse 32, concerning what these people have turned into. How God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not fitting. And look at what the Bible says. He says, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, fiery, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God for those who practice these things that they are deserving of death not only do the same but also approve those who practice them. So you have two categories. You have the doers and you have the supporters of the doers. Their faith is the same. It is eternal damnation. And Paul then writes to Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, concerning the times we live in, he says, for the time will come when they will not tolerate sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, will multiply teachers for themselves, 
Because they have an itch to hear something new. And they will turn away from hearing the truth and turn aside. How prophetic that is. Concerning the time that we are living in. Now you may sit there and ask, but I see the evil prospering. I see nothing happening to them. Yes, God has set boundaries. For every man's wickedness. There will come a time when evil will be judged. So don't be a participant of evil. Because every vessel of evil is a candidate of the wrath of God. Is a candidate of the judgment of God. There is a point of no return. There is a point when your heart becomes colored. And you continue in your filthiness up to eternity. May I submit you that hell Again, is not a place of reformation. Hell Geyena. is not a place of transition. It is a place of punishment. Geyena. It is a place of eternal banishment. So even those who are in Hades today, their final place is the place of eternal judgment, which is the lake of fire. So it is appointed once for men to live. After this time, after death, it is judgment. And it is imperative. This is the picture Jesus paints of us. In Luke chapter 16, Luke chapter 16 when he contrasts Lazarus and the rich man, the rich man repented, but it was a point of no return. Don't wait for that moment. Why you are still here? There is the time to repent. This is what the Bible tells us in verse 14. He says, Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. There is a moment to turn around. There is a moment to go to the cross and receive the salvation that is by faith. Because the fact of the matter is this. The Bible says there are those that will not enter the city. There are those that will not be part of those who God is going to dwell among for all eternity. And in verse 14, the Bible gives us four categories, five categories of people that will not make it that we be outsiders that we not get into this city we not be among those people this is how he contrasts it. and he contrasts it among sins the first category is of the dogs now who are the dogs the dogs are the false teachers those who lead people away from the truth of God Number two are those who practice magic arts. So these are the people 
Who attempt to engage the spiritual world through other means other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. The access to divinity is Jesus Christ. Any other means other than Jesus Jesus Christ, you are practicing magic arts and you will be outside of the city. The third category are the sexually immoral. This refers to those who engage in sexual behavior outside the sacred bond of marriage. It doesn't matter how glamorous the devil has painted it. Today you have an entire industry profiting and pushing and recruiting by day and by night. Men and women and children of all walks of life are getting entangled into this way. Everywhere you turn on media, there is an attempt to recruit. There is an attempt to get your attention. There is an attempt to get you at least to pat an eye. To open a link. And it's, it's painted as glamorous. But they don't show you the end. Thanks to the open book. Thanks to the revealed revelation of Jesus Christ. He says the sexually immoral will not be part of those that will enjoy eternal bliss. Number four are the murderers. These are the people who unlawfully take life. Over another human being. Life is precious. There is only one giver of life. It is God Almighty. No one has the power. I know we to take another man's life. Take that as the gospel truth. Number five, the idolaters. And everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Look at that. These are people who worship someone or something other than God. So anything you worship. Who is not God through the person of Jesus Christ? You become an idolater. When you elevate someone or something and give them what only God deserves, you become an idolater. If you twist God's truth, so that you achieve the, the, the end. You see, we are living in a time where we say the end justifies the means. It, it may be a popular saying. It may have made people who they are respected today. But it has an end. And the end is not good. We see all that today. Men consistently persisting in sin. The message for you is repent. Turn to God. Turn away from sin. Receive 
kutwala the grace of Jesus Christ. Receive his love. Receive his forgiveness. He died at Calvary. So that you don't die in your sin. It doesn't matter how long it has taken. It doesn't matter how hard you have fallen. Jesus yes. saves sinners. And he will save you. Today, right now, he can't save you. Now. Why don't you Get to him. Ask for forgiveness. Ask him to wash you with his blood. He will give you a new beginning. Why don't you pray this prayer? Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, you are the savior of the world. You are the redeemer of mankind. You are the word made flesh. You are the one that died for my sin. Today, dear Lord, I admit that I am a sinner. I am dead in my sin. And I need a savior in my life. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash and cleanse me and purify my heart. Because I know that on the third day you rose again from the dead. And in rising from the dead, when I believe in you, I rise with you. And I get to be seated in the high places with you. Therefore, Lord, today, I declare that I am born again by faith in your accomplished work on my behalf. Therefore, Lord, I say, write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now, if you made that prayer, do you know what? You have been wonderfully saved. Just like that. Would you? Like the thief at the cross said, Lord, remember me. And the Lord said, today you will be with me. In that moment, all his sins were washed away. Even now for you, all your sins in this moment have been washed away. You have been justified by faith. Right now you have the righteousness of God. There is the number on that screen. Please call. Somebody will receive this call. And guide you in the first steps. This journey. For you who is born again, we have a message to proclaim. Why? Because we are the recipients. We are the custodians of the unsealed word of life. Concerning the revelation of Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of the world. Let's take this message with boldness to all parts of the world. And may God reach a place as you carry this message. May the fire which had burnt out in your life be rekindled. The fire to preach this gospel. The fire to preach this unadulterated word of God. That Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. God richly bless you as you preach this gospel.
and from Dominion Church. Dominion. Would like to say it's been a pleasure. Having you today. Tune in next week. To demo weekend and may God richly bless you. Shalom.